Hey everybody, Jason Fonger here. How you doing? Hope you're all safe and healthy. Today, we're going to be looking at the two big questions everybody has about being vegan. And since I've been vegan for over a decade, uh, I figured I would come and share a thing or two that I've learned along the way and that would have really helped me uh, if I had known these things in the past. So it's only two, two main questions we're going to be looking at. I'm going to do my best to provide you with some helpful answers to these important questions. So uh, right now, I'm in here in Toronto, Canada. It's winter. Uh, it's cold. It's snowy in the heart of winter. Uh, here's a picture I took uh, in my backyard just, just the other day so you can get a sense of, of what's going on. Uh, Maybe different where you are in the world, but that's what I'm dealing with right now. So cold and snowy. I have mixed emotions about winter. I love hot weather. It's great for triathlon training, uh, but the snowy, cold winter weather, uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, I've always loved playing hockey and other winter sports like snowboarding. And I always try to enjoy these winter sports uh, as much as I can because it really helps me get through these cold and dark winter months. Um, and I'll never forget one particular snowboarding trip I went on. Um, back well, once have been 2015, so I was 14 years old, and uh, something happened on that snowboarding trip. It was out out in New England, and something happened one day on that snowboarding trip that would change my life forever. Uh, one day after we had finished riding down the slopes, uh, I was listening to what at the time was my favorite album. It was a pop punk album by a band called Goldfinger. Uh, so I figured I'd open up the the liner notes and check them out. And what I what I found uh, was, you know, of course I found the normal things like the names of the band members and the credits and some of the lyrics. Uh, those things are all expected. But what I did not expect to see was all this information they had put in the liner notes about what happens to animals in the name of food, clothing, uh, entertainment, and experimentation. And I remember feeling extremely shocked by what I had learned. I felt shocked and disgusted. And I also remember trying to push it out of my mind because it made me feel so uncomfortable. I didn't want to keep thinking about it. I didn't want to know. And I think we can all think of a time when we felt like that, right? When you learn something new and it makes you feel so uncomfortable that you just want to forget about it so that you can go on with life as normal, feel normal again. Ignorance is bliss. Um, so that evening, uh, I went to dinner at a restaurant with my family. And by then, I had more or less been able to push the things that I had seen out of my mind, try to forget about it, um, or, or so I thought. I ordered meat as usual, and the waiter came out a few minutes later and placed it on the table in front of me. And as I looked down at my plate, I remembered everything that I had read about earlier that day in the liner notes. This is actually a little uh, little gift that that is from the uh, the music video of the title track of that album, um, where they had this kind of moment where you know, the person in the music video, he's realizing that this, this piece of meat on, on a plate is actually an animal, or was actually an animal. It's the body of an animal. So I looked down, I saw the animal flesh for what it really was. And at that moment, it didn't even register as food in my brain. Uh, I, I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I was so disgusted by what I'd seen earlier that day in the liner notes that I turned to my dad and I said, here, dad, you, you go ahead and eat this. I, I'm, I'm not really, not really hungry anymore. So for the most part, people don't want to think about the life and death of the animals uh, that, that went into making their food, especially when they're eating them. This is basically why some people hate vegans so much. Vegans bring up animal rights during dinner, and it makes people feel uncomfortable. So after that experience... I went vegetarian for a few months. And then as much as I hate to admit it, I actually went back to eating meat. And that's because I ran into the same two problems that many of you are likely to run into at some point if you're if you're trying to be vegan, if you're interested in, in eating plant-based. So uh, what I wanna do in this presentation is I wanna help you solve these problems, help give you some tools to solve these problems uh, when you face them, or maybe to help you even, uh, you know, avoid avoid some of the problems that I've that I've had. So that's the whole idea with this presentation here. Um, so that that snowboarding trip back in uh, back in two thousand 
in five. That snowboarding trip was back in 2005. And I didn't go vegan until 2009. And after that, it took a few years of ups and downs to you know, make some mistakes and really get to get to the point where I, I, I knew what really works. You know, I got 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 it figured out. Um, so, yeah, it's taken me a long time to get to where I am today as an elite level triathlete. Uh, and today I'm excited to share the most important things that I have learned with you. So there are two questions I'll help you answer today. Um, the first question, the two big questions we're going to look at today. Number one is, what should I eat to thrive as a vegan? And number two is, how can I overcome the social challenges I'm faced with as a vegan? First, I'll tell you the most important thing you need to know about your daily nutritional needs in order to keep yourself well-nourished on a plant-based diet. Then I'll show you how to handle some difficult situations that vegans often find themselves in. Before we get to answering those main questions, I want you to answer this one for yourself. Why is being vegan important to you? Think about that. Why is being vegan important to you? Is it because you care about animals? Maybe you care about the environment. What about your health or the health of your family? Why is it that you feel it's important for you to be vegan? Connect with the reason why being vegan is important to you. Start with that because when the why is clear, the how becomes easier. If you're not clear on why you want to be vegan, it's going to be way harder and you probably won't stay vegan for very long. So I actually, I want you to write this down, get a pen and paper and write this sentence. I want to be vegan because, and you fill in the blank. It's really important to stay connected with the reason that you want to be vegan. So write that down, write something down. Why do you want to be vegan? Get clear on the why. Now, if you're someone who is new to this, um, maybe you're just tuning in uh, to you know learn a bit more about this vegan thing, see what it's all about. It's important to educate yourself on the ethical, environmental, and health-related reasons for being vegan and eating a plant-based diet. So, there are tons of great documentaries and books out there. Uh, here are some of my favorites. Maybe you've seen the Game Changers documentary. Um, Cowspiracy, the sustainability secret that's all about uh, the environmental implications of animal agriculture and how eating a plant based diet is better for the environment in many, many ways. Dominion uh, is a film out of Australia that really goes into all of the different ways that we exploit animals. And in fairly graphic detail, you, you get quite familiar with what exactly animals are going through. Um, another, another popular one is How Not to Die. This is a book all about. Uh, the Health Benefits of Plant-Based Eating by Dr. Michael Greger. Uh, so these are just some of my favorites. There's tons of things out there for you to check out. Um, but yeah, you want to just check out which, whichever, what, go back to that last reason. What's the reason that you want to be vegan? You know, um, try, to, try to figure out what is it that is important to you that makes you want to be vegan. So um, yeah, in order to best answer the question, what should I eat to thrive as a vegan? Okay, I'm going to tell you about when I went vegan, why I struggled to figure out what to eat in order to feel my best, and how I ultimately overcame those struggles. Uh, I've now been vegan for over a decade, and I'm in the best shape of my life. Over the past few years, I've won several triathlon races. And at 30 years of age, I plan on getting stronger and faster for many years to come. I say this not to brag, okay? I just I just say this to show you that I really am thriving. Um, there, there's no way you can't you can't fake athletic performances. If I wasn't thriving, there's no way I would be able to achieve this level of athletic success. Um, so. Fast forward from that snowboard trip in 2005 to fall of 2009. 
So I'm in my second year of university and I'm eating pizza and wings every night. I was living on campus um, and I remember actually being woken up early in the morning by the sound of my roommate chopping fruit. He would eat the pizza and wings with me the night before, but then in the morning he'd wake up and he'd have this healthy habit of waking up and chopping fruit. Um, you know, he, he would tell me, man, I love eating fruit first thing in the morning. You know, it's so refreshing. I feel so full of energy. I feel so alive. And I'd be like, man, you need to, you need to calm down. Okay. I'm not, I'm not ready for, uh, for your fruit parties at 7am every morning. Okay. And I actually remember getting really, really mad at him. Have you ever been mad at someone just for having healthier habits than you? You know, how dare they, how dare they? So Anyways, I'm in my second year of university and I come down with a throat infection. Um, it hurt a lot. Here's the thing though. I'd had throat infections many, many times before. Throughout high school, I'd get some kind of throat infection at least once or twice a year. Uh, this time though, I got really upset about it. I thought to myself, why does this keep happening to me? This sucks. It's painful. I wanted to stop getting sick. Uh, so I did some research online and I found some information about how dairy products, <clears throat> excuse me, dairy products might be the cause. So I thought, hmm, <laughs> well, see water, not, not dairy milk. And if it was milk, it would probably be oat milk at this point. But, uh, you know, I thought, hmm, well, there are all these ethical problems with animal products that I've, uh, I've been trying to avoid thinking about. And now I have a health reason for cutting out animal products, uh, cutting animal products out of my diet. Seems like going vegan might be a good idea. So I did. I did. I went vegan. Um, I cut out all animal products. And not only did I go vegan, I tried my best to eat the healthiest possible version of the vegan diet, or at least what I thought was the healthiest. I ate big salads. I juiced vegetables, I blended smoothies, I ate fresh fruit, I spent tons of money on superfoods, I even strived to eat only 100% raw food. And how did it feel? It felt, it felt great. You know, I was hyped. It was awesome. For a while, for a while, until I started to feel hungry all the time. I was thin and still losing weight. Felt like no matter what I ate, I couldn't fill myself up. Uh, I couldn't get enough energy. It felt like something was missing. It felt like something was missing. And I've personally spoken to hundreds, if not thousands, of people who have had an experience similar to mine. They go vegan, they feel great for a while, and eventually their energy drops and they feel hungry all the time. So, what is going on here? Why? Is this something that keeps happening to people if eating a plant-based diet is so healthy? Why was this something that was happening to me after a few months of being vegan? Many people would blame a lack of protein. But that's not it. That's not it. In many cases, it's actually just that the person is not eating enough total calories. As long as you eat enough total calories from whole plant foods to meet your daily needs, you are pretty much guaranteed to get enough protein. This is critical to understand. Foods made from whole plants tend to be significantly lower in calories by volume than foods containing animal products or refined foods. You can see here what 500 calories of different kinds of food look like in the human stomach. Now, this is both good and bad news. The good news is if you struggle with your weight, you can eat a ton of plant foods and lose weight while feeling full. That's great, right? Uh, the bad news is if you're already a healthy weight and want to gain weight or if you're underweight, it can be really easy to unintentionally undereat by filling up on low calorie foods. And this is exactly what I was doing. I was eating plenty of healthy foods and I thought I was eating enough. My meals looked big, but the calories I needed to thrive simply weren't there. Specifically, the carbohydrates weren't there. So 
how did I eventually overcome this problem? And how can I help others to overcome this problem or ideally avoid it altogether? Well, first, let me tell you about some of the advice given by popular uh, influencers in the vegan movement at the time without naming any names. Um, some influencers said and still say to minimize fruit consumption. According to them, the sugars in fruit do all kinds of terrible things to your body. I like to hope that most people know that eating fruit, eating a lot of fruit is a good thing. Fruit is a very, very healthy food group, food group. you know, the most, uh, the, the best suited food for our anatomy. Uh, there's all kinds of great reasons to eat fruit. Um, but unfortunately, this myth that too much fruit is bad for you is commonly thrown around by certain diet gurus. And these are typically weight loss gurus who sell people on unsustainable, quick fix, non-solutions such as low carbohydrate diets. The truth is you'll want to eat as much fruit as you can get your hands on. Fruit is healthy, okay? That is not the way to go to cut out all fruit because you think that the sugar in fruit is is the devil. Uh, this is one of the most annoying trends that we see right now in weight loss is people saying that carbohydrates are the devil, eliminate all carbs, even fruit. Um, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Others said to eat a diet based on overpriced superfoods. This is kind of bad advice unless your money is burning a hole in your pocket, of course. Uh, when someone starts trying to sell you on a superfood, just know that while the food might be great, it's probably being sold to you at a huge markup. And uh, like I said, unless your money is burning a hole in your pocket, you'll probably want to base your diet around more, uh, more affordable foods. Uh, some people said to do water fasting, juice feasting, or three, five, or seven day cleanses. Others said to do probiotics, enemas, or even suggested that I drink my own urine. But none of these were the real solution to my problem. My problem was that I was not eating enough calories, specifically enough calories from carbohydrates. And the only solution was to figure out how to start getting enough. Simple as that. Since my issue was having low energy, I figured I could learn from vegan athletes. I figured they must know how to keep themselves properly fueled. Keep in mind, I was not athletic at all at this point. I just wanted to stop feeling tired and hungry all the time. So I learned that to perform at a high level, athletes regularly eat over 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight every day. To reach that amount, vegan athletes eat plenty of fruits, grains, starches, beans, and other high carbohydrate plant foods. Green juices and salads are healthy. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong here. But if you focus too much on those kinds of low calorie foods, it can be difficult to hit your daily carbohydrate needs. That's exactly what I was doing. That's exactly what I was doing. And it's the same thing I see happening all too often with people who go vegan. So when people ask me, what should I eat? to thrive as a vegan? What should I eat to thrive as a vegan? I want to give a very simple answer that is easy to remember, and that is to eat enough carbohydrates. Eat enough carbohydrates. I'll say it again. To thrive as a vegan, you must eat enough carbohydrates. To thrive as a vegan, of course, anybody, even if you're not vegan, if you want to thrive, you got to get enough carbohydrates. Let's be objective about it. What does enough carbohydrates look like? Well, it might seem like a lot. I suggest starting with 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight each day. This is what I've aimed for as a minimum daily amount for many years, and it served me well. I found that as soon as I started consistently hitting my daily carbohydrate needs, I went from having no energy to looking for ways to use up all of my excess energy. And that's when I started getting into fitness and running and later uh, swimming and cycling and, and triathlons and, and all that. So for someone who's overweight, I suggest using your target healthy body weight rather than your current body weight to help you determine your minimum daily carbohydrate needs. 
and then eat more if you still feel hungry. That's the thing. You can always eat more if you still feel hungry. You do not need to restrict calories to lose weight on a diet based on whole plant foods. That's the beauty of it. You can eat all you want as long as you're eating whole plant foods. Um, but you will probably find that you lose weight more easily if that's your goal uh, by minimizing your intake of fatty foods such as nuts, seeds, um, avocados, nut butters, olives, and especially oils. Those are very calorically dense um, and, and dense in fat. Fat, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. So what to eat to thrive as a vegan, what to eat to thrive as a vegan. Eat lots of whole plant foods and make sure you get enough carbohydrates every day. So again, I suggest 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day as a starting point. And you can tweak that amount from there. So find out what that number is for you. Check out this, this little simple equation right here. Uh, write it down. Write down your daily carbohydrate needs. All you got to do is take your body weight in kilograms, might have to convert from pounds, um, multiply by 10, and that's approximately how many grams of carbohydrates uh, you'll want to get into your system each day. So try to get as many of these carbs from whole plant foods as possible. Um, one more thing before, uh, you know, one more thing on nutrition before we shift gears in a moment and get into some of these social issues faced by vegans, okay? I just wanna be clear that I do realize that there's, there's more to nutrition than simply getting enough carbohydrates, okay? There is more to it than that. I, I know fats and proteins are important too. I'm not trying to demonize those, they are important. Um, and I know that there are, there are tons of other things that we could talk about when it comes to nutrition, but the reality is meeting your daily carbohydrate needs is the foundation. If that's not in place, it doesn't matter what else you do. You're setting yourself up for failure. I see it happen all too often. So instead, make sure you eat enough carbohydrates every day and set yourself up for success. Okay, so switching gears now to focus on some of the social challenges that are often presented to vegans. Now, as it turns out, making sure that you eat enough carbohydrates on a regular basis is not only the foundation for a healthy diet, it's also going to help you deal with any stressful situations that come up in your life. Uh, you might be wondering how so. I'm sure you have at some point in your life seen someone who is hangry, hangry. That person is bad tempered or irritable because they are in need of some carbohydrates. When someone is hangry, Situations that should be fairly easy to, to deal with, they become frustrating, annoying, and seemingly impossible to handle. For someone who has consumed enough carbohydrates, such situations cause much less stress and are easier to handle. But just like there is more to nutrition than getting enough carbohydrates, there's also more to it when we look at overcoming some of the social challenges commonly faced by vegans. So what kind of challenges am I talking about? The social challenges I wanna help you with now have less to do with what is actually on your plate and more to do with how what's on your plate or not on your plate affects your relationships with other people. What if being vegan is important to you but the people in your life are not supportive? Your partner, family members, friends, classmates, co-workers, the people closest to you. How these people respond to your choice to be vegan can present all kinds of challenges to you. Humans are social creatures. And for the most part, uh, for a lot of us, socialization takes place around food. When we sit down with other people to share a meal, we have a sort of bonding experience. If we have a fundamental disagreement about what is okay to eat and what is not okay to eat, this makes bonding over food more difficult. And it can contribute to problems in those relationships. So if you want to minimize the amount of difficulty in your relationships with non-vegans, you might want to be chill about it. Let me explain, let me explain. I know what you're thinking. How can we just be chill while the people closest to us are making themselves sick, 
causing horrific suffering to animals and destroying the planet. This is much easier said than done, especially if you're particularly passionate about veganism. Now, I remember when I first went vegan and I just wanted to shout it from the rooftops day and night to anyone within earshot. I'm sure the vast majority of my conversations with my family and friends at that point in my life were centered around veganism. These conversations grew into debates and then arguments until eventually I was chronically frustrated with the people in my life not wanting to be vegan like me. New vegans often have such unrivaled enthusiasm, and it is a beautiful thing to see their passion. But what I've learned over the years is that it's best to save that passion and energy for the right time and place. This means carving out some time to do animal rights activism or some kind of vegan advocacy that will allow you to channel your anger and frustration into something productive. So I gradually developed a chill attitude about veganism when it came to my close relationships with non-vegans. And the reason I was able to do this, I believe, was because I was making YouTube videos about veganism. I was doing vegan activism. Uh, I was training to become a better triathlete so that I could inspire people. Um, I put my energy into doing productive things that would reach far and wide to people who actually wanted to learn about veganism. And once I realized how good that felt, I stopped wanting to push veganism on other people who aren't interested. Besides, guess what happens when you try to push veganism on people? The same thing happens. When you try to push people physically, they push back. So once I uh, once I stopped pushing veganism on the people who were closest to me in my life, they stopped pushing back. So when I talk about being chill or having a chill attitude in your relationships with non-vegans, I'm referring to a framework. I want to share that framework with you right now. Chill is an acronym. I recommend this framework not because I think all vegans should chill out and stop advocating for the animals. On the contrary, I believe many different kinds of vegan activism, uh, you know, animal rights activism and vegan advocacy, very important, very important stuff. Okay, so I'm not trying to say that you know vegans should just shut up and be quiet or whatever. I'm just th- this framework is a tool that I'm giving you to help you cope with challenging life situations that have to do with relationships that you may have with non-vegans in your life. Uh, It's about meeting these people where they're at so that you can understand each other and hopefully um, things will evolve in a more um, productive manner. So what does it mean to be chill? So chill, write it down. C is for confident. You want to be confident. This is about knowing your stuff, being a good example. H is to be helpful, help people who express interest, and don't hinder uninterested people. I is to be informative. When the time is right, share what you know with people. The first L is listening. Be listening. When the um, Pay attention to people and seek to understand them. Have empathy. And the second L is to be learning. Don't be a know-it-all. Acknowledge things that you aren't sure about. Confident, helpful, informative, listening, and learning. In my experience, this kind of attitude has helped me to minimize the negative effects that being vegan has had on my relationships with non-vegans. So let's look at each of these now in a little more detail. So confident. Sometimes I see vegans out there cutting people down who are not vegan or even putting down other vegans. The only reason people do this is because they lack confidence. Someone who is confident does not need to put down others, but instead has the strength to help others. Uh, Be helpful. So in order to help someone, you need to know what they need. It's, It's so much easier to help someone if they actually want your help. So ideally, people will feel comfortable coming to you for help when they need it. So if you insist on giving unwanted help to people, that might not be well received. Um, Be informative. When the time is right, meaning something comes up in conversation or maybe a question is asked that's relevant to veganism, do take the opportunity to inform people about what you know and be sure to let them know where they can go to find the source of that information. 
So for example, I'm not a doctor, but I always send people to nutritionfacts.org where they can learn from uh, Dr. Gregor uh, from the, for themselves. So uh, listening, before you can be helpful or informative, you need to make sure that you are listening to people. This goes deeper than just hearing what people actually say. It means paying attention to the feelings behind the person's words, as well as observing their behavior. And finally, learning. Don't develop a know-it-all attitude. Being vegan is an incredible thing to do for the animals and your health and the environment. But just because you're vegan, it does not mean you have all of the answers for all of the problems in the world. It's usually best to be humble and down to earth in your uh, interactions with others. So if you are struggling uh, with the way being vegan is affecting your relationships with, uh, with the non-vegans in your life, specifically ones closest to you, um, try your best to apply this framework. I think you'll find that if you can be chill about being vegan, uh, the people closest to you will be more likely to view veganism in a positive light as a, re as a result of their relationship with you. So, uh, so to recap, these are the two big questions, right? What should I eat to thrive as a vegan? And how can I deal with the social challenges I'm faced with as a vegan? So when it comes to what to eat, lots and lots of whole plant foods, making sure you eat enough carbohydrates every day. Try 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day to start, and then fine tune that number uh, as you gain experience. As for the social challenges, if you wanna minimize the amount of difficulty in your relationships with non-vegans, Try using the chill framework. Be confident, helpful, informative, listening, and always be learning. Before we wrap things up to here, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's happened in my life as a result of applying the guidelines I've just shared with you. So how has eating enough carbohydrates changed my life? I've transformed from a weak, skinny vegan into an elite level triathlete. I've won many races starting in 2017 when I won three races in my first year. And more recently, I competed at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in 2019. And in training for these races, I would sometimes eat in excess of 20 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight every day. And for me, that meant over 6,000 calories in a day. For normal fitness levels, I find about 10 grams of carbs uh, per kilogram of body weight each day is about right. Uh, if I still feel hungry, I eat more. And if I feel too full to eat that much, then I eat less. You might find that you feel best eating eight grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight per day, or maybe you feel better with 12 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight per day. And it'll probably vary a little bit uh, throughout the year and from day to day, depending on how hungry you are. Um, but what I hope you take away from this presentation is the importance of being objective about your carbohydrate intake and monitoring it so that you don't end up under eating. Um, so how has my chill attitude affected my relationships? Uh, remember earlier I said that when I finally stopped pushing veganism on the people closest to me that they stopped pushing back? Well, in the case of my family, not only did they stop pushing back, they eventually got to the point where they decided for themselves that eating a plant-based diet was something they actually wanted to do after all. And, to, and today, um, almost everyone, pretty, well, yeah, every, everyone in my immediate family eats a predominantly plant-based diet. Um, and, you know, check out my dad is the only one of four siblings who has not had a heart attack or a stroke, and he plans, uh, he plans on keeping it that way. Uh, oh, my dad also works in um, in the renewable energy sector, so he understands the need uh, for for eating plant based proteins from from an environmental perspective as well. Um, my mom decided she no longer has any interest in paying for animal cruelty and wants to do everything in her power to stay fit and healthy. She also happens to make some of the best vegan meals on the planet. On the planet, my brother. Watch a documentary about the environmental impact of animal agriculture. It's actually cowspiracy. And that inspired him to change his diet. He's an indoor cycling instructor and marathon runner who enjoys, like I do, the performance enhancing benefits of eating a plant-based diet. Um, 
I, I can't guarantee that using the chill framework will result in all of your family members adopting a plant-based diet. Um, I can't guarantee that aiming to eat 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day will lead you to win sporting events. Uh, but I do know that if I could travel through time, go back and uh, give myself these tips earlier in my life, it would have helped me out a lot. So I hope this helps you. Um, please get in touch with me if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, or if you want to learn more about how to thrive long term as a vegan. Um, I'm always here to help and I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm easy to find on all the social media platforms or at jasonfonger.com. Uh, thanks so much for your time. I wish you all the best. And remember, eat enough carbs and be chill. All right. Thanks, everybody. Peace out.